in this video I will show you the new sensor fusion algorithm in action. As you might know, we have recently released two new versions of our software components, the Notocon 0.2 and the complete version of our new Blender add-on. These releases are important because they allow you to use the new sensor fusion algorithm we have been implementing, which brings improved accuracy and stability to the capture, but they also include a faster calibration, sensor calibration algorithm and they also let you see an approximation of the magnetic disturbances on the proximities of the sensors by color coding the bones on the screen. By the way, these new features were meant to be implemented after our crowdfunding campaign, but as you know, the coronavirus outbreak forced us to postpone the campaign. In the meantime, we went ahead and implemented features, and now the campaign is about to be open again with an optimized version of the hardware that we will lower in price in about 100 euros. So this is a great chance to get an improved version of this hardware for a unique price. So be sure to check the link that you will find in the description. So back to this demo. We will be publishing two versions of this video. A shorter one in which I will jump directly to the demonstration, uh, but also a, a longer one for those of you who are perhaps working with the suit and want to see the complete processing from accessing the Raspberry and activating the Notocor and so on. If you're seeing this, it is because you are in the longer version. So let's get to it. Okay. What I will show you now is the procedure as it currently is, which means it involves accessing the terminal, dealing with the command line, etc. Keep in mind that after the crowdfunding, many additions will be made to the Cordata framework, and they will allow you to start and manage the capture in a much easier way, like for example with your smartphone or by clicking a button on the Blender add-on. Okay, so with that said, the first thing you need to do is to access the Raspberry, which is running on my back right now. In order to do that, we need to use SSH. SSH is a, a utility that lets you access a terminal environment on a remote host. It is already built in in most Linux distribution and also in Mac. And if you're using Windows, you will have to download and install a separate um, SSH client. You will find info for that on our wiki. So SSH is a success, it's a command line utility. I will write SSH with easy the command and I will also give SSH the user I want to use to connect to the remote host and also I have to write here the IP address of the remote host, the Raspberry. I don't know this yet. I need to find out find out which is the IP the connector is using to connect to the local area network. In this case, the local area network is my telephone running as a hotspot. So I can just see the list of connected devices and copy the IP address of each one of them. I said each one of them because I will also need the IP address of this computer later. So I will just, I will get this information, okay? So, uh, let me see, this PC has an IP address of 192.168.43.189, okay? By the way, those are the local IP addresses of these devices. They are the IP addresses they are using in this local area network, not the, uh, the, the IP addresses they use to connect to the internet, okay? So, for the Raspberry Pi, the address is 192.168.43.16, okay? So let me copy this one and I will paste it here on the SSH command. I hit enter, it would prompt me for a password. If you're using the image that we provide, the Raspberry image that we provide, the password will be just core data. Okay, so now I'm in the Raspberry. And now I need to start the Notocor, which is the main program in charge of reading the sensors and making the capture. So in order to do that, I will have to write Notocor, which is the name of the program, and I will have to pass a configuration file, which is an XML describing, uh, among, among other things, the, the hierarchy of sensors that I can attach to the body. This configuration file can be found under the Notocore folder. 
and with the name default biped.xml. Okay, this is already provided with the notochord, you don't have to write it down. Another uh, argument I need to pass to the notochord is the IP address to this computer for this computer in which I will be receiving the capture data. So let me copy this one. This is the IP address, I repeat, of this computer. Let me paste it here and I will hit enter. Notochord will ask me to hit enter again and it will, it will start reading and configuring the sensors for the capture. Let's wait until it's done. Okay, now it's done. He, it is now sending data to this computer. In order to see this data, I will need to open Blender. Okay, so I can dismiss the, the splash screen. I can delete all the um, elements on the scene by selecting them and hitting delete. And now I will add, by going to window, for data, add a mock-up avatar to the scene. It will add me this figure here with an armature. And I will also add a mock-up workspace on the top. As you notice, if you're using a small screen like this one, you will uh, the mockup workspace will be hidden. You can drag the complete area by clicking on with the middle mouse button. Okay, so here we are on the mockup area, together with the armature, um, the product eight add-on added um, a configuration tree, which is already set up to capture uh, default byte configuration. So I just have to hit connect, and as you can see is now receiving data but the data is completely messed up that's normal at the beginning because we need to uh, do a further some further steps to to get a proper capture so i will go back there if you are seeing this it's because you are seeing the short version in which we have already have the data coming to blender but as you can see it's not really looking right yet the to start with this is not looking like a human and most of the sensors are red apart from the ones from the hands that's why i have already moved the sensors since i started uh, capturing but the ones on the legs have haven't really moved so i need to move them around at the beginning of the cartoon when i start not a core in order to make them receive uh, get some data from the environment okay so that now they've all become green except for one and one. Okay, now we're ready to go. But as you can see, it's not really looking right yet. We are missing the pause calibration, which is a procedure in which the, the performer has to stand on T-pose, looking sound for a few seconds, while the program collects data in order to make the pause look right. So I will do it using the timer calibration that you can find under the advanced controls of the armature now. Stand here for a few seconds. Okay. By the way, this is not a great calibration. In order to do it right, you will be have to we have to do it in, in two persons, and the other person should click the calibrate button. But if you just want to get a, a normal capture and not really accurate one, this calibration is okay. So as you can see, the the accuracy of this new capture is much better than that was before. I don't really know if you get, I will look at this camera. I don't really know if you get to see this now, but we will be for sure sharing some samples of, of captures of captures made with these new versions. So you can try this at home. And what I wanted to show you apart from this new accuracy was the new magnetic compensation and the magnetic uh, disturbance that you get to see with colors on the, on the blender pattern. Okay, so I was doing this here uh, close to this metal frame. I'm not doing, I am not really close to it right now, but if I get closer, as you can see, the sensors start perceiving some magnetic disturbance and then start to send data an indicator for you that the, if you don't get to turn all the all the sensors green at the beginning it's an indication for you that the environment in which you are calibrating 
you are capturing is not the best one and you should try to move to another one in order to get better captures. Okay? So that's the demo for today, that's what I wanted to show you. If you got this hardware at home, please try it and try these new versions and let us know how they are working for you. And if you don't, well, don't miss this opportunity of getting one of the first production versions of this hardware on our upcoming crowdfunding campaign. As usual, you will find the link in the description and we will see you in the next video. Bye!